Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, December 19th. A new study based on insurance claims shows that Tesla drivers have the highest accident rate of any brand in the auto industry. Now, this is despite Tesla claiming that its autopilot safety features result in a much lower crash rate than the industry average. So let's look at the details. Tesla used to release an autopilot safety report that tracked miles between accidents in its vehicles based on the level of autopilot used or not used and compared it to the industry average. Now, the automaker used the report to claim that autopilot technology resulted in a much safer driving experience and that its vehicles would crash much less often than the average car in the U.S. even without autopilot. But now, a new study seems to counter this claim, but it's actually measuring something a little bit different. The company LendingTree analyzed millions of insurance claims to come up with a ranking of brands with the most accidents per 1,000 drivers. Now, according to the report, Tesla scored 23.54 accidents per 1,000. And if you're curious, the next brand was actually Ram with 22.76. Now, the real difference is that Tesla appears to be using accidents that are being activated with airbags and other restraints, while LendingTree used insurance claims that originated from any crash, which means that it could include smaller fender benders that don't activate airbags. Now, at first glance, it could appear that this is bad news for Tesla, but the details paint a less clear picture. The German government announced that it will abruptly end its subsidy program for electric vehicles on December 31st. This has dealt a big blow to automakers in one of the bigger European markets. Tesla and Mercedes-Benz say that they will compensate for this for their customers by covering the full price of the subsidy for German buyers. And wouldn't you know it, other automakers have joined in too. Now, with the subsidy, customers in Germany benefit from a €6,750 for the purchase of an EV, with the government paying up to €4,500 and the manufacturer covering the other €2,250. So, Volkswagen says that they will be compensating for the subsidy on orders placed for their electric vehicles, and Stellantis also said that they would fund the full subsidy until the end of the year. This, according to Reuters. Volkswagen, Porsche, and Audi have committed to use the Tesla-developed NACS connector for American vehicles starting in 2025. This was one of the last holdouts in the American market, and a major one too. But check this out. The Federal Highway Administration announced that they will seek feedback on how government rules should be updated to account for the new NACS charging standard. This will potentially unlock $7.5 billion in federal subsidies for Tesla-developed charging connector stations. As part of the bipartisan infrastructure law, the U.S. government has allocated that $7.5 billion to expand EV charging access. $5 billion of that is through the NEVI program. And as of today, any DC charger installed with federal money can have the NACS connector but must also include the CCS connector. But now that the charging standard is living up to its name, the Federal Highway Administration has announced that it will, quote, soon publish a request for information to solicit feedback from stakeholders on updating the minimum standards and requirements for electric vehicle charging stations to allow for new technology and continued innovation. Lexus is already updating its first all-electric model. The 2024 Lexus RZ lineup is gaining a new 300E model with more range and a cheaper starting price. Lexus is adding the RZ300E model that is $4,500 cheaper than last year's model. That's good news. The model achieves up to 266 miles of range on 18-inch wheels with a 72.8 kilowatt hour battery. With 20-inch wheels, the model has 224 miles of range. It's offered in front-wheel drive with the new features of 201 horsepower. The new 2024 Lexus RZ300E Premium Edition will start at $55,150. That's actually just the trim level. It's not like an equipment package. There is one more trim past that, and it's called the Luxury, or as the Brits would say, Luxury. Dad would thrash us to sleep with his belt. Luxury. You might see headlines that Mercedes is beating Tesla in autonomous driving, and here's what the fuss is about. Mercedes-Benz is the first automaker permitted to use exterior marker lights, which means that automated driving can be activated in California and Nevada. This is level three. We'll get to that in a second. 
The unique marker lights are integrated into the EQS, their vehicle, in the front and rear, and also on the outside mirrors for the testing cars. This is a fledgling technology, first made available in Germany last year. It's called Drive Pilot. It does have some limitations. Level 3 is conditional automation, meaning that it only works within Mercedes' quote-unquote operational design domain. It pretty much means heavy traffic conditions under 40 miles per hour with a lead car available, good weather, good road conditions, and in well-mapped areas. The driver also needs to be able to take the wheel when the car alerts them. Now, this is territory that Tesla has not opened available for the public quite yet, although we do anticipate that they're far beyond this in testing. Really, we hope that any autonomous leading company is well beyond this in testing. Rivian revealed that it has chosen Clayco as a partner to build a massive $5 billion EV plant. Clayco, one of the largest full-service design, engineering, and construction firms in the U.S., has announced the news. Construction was expected to begin on the plant last summer, but legal battles tied up the $1.5 billion incentive package, leading to the delays. The 1,800-acre complex will be home to Rivian's R2 vehicles, of which they will have a much cheaper starting price, around $40,000 to $45,000. The plant is expected to be able to build 200,000 vehicles per year, and initial production is slated to begin next year. Clayco, being a huge company, is not just in the pocket of Rivian. They also have scored another EV plant project from VinFast, among others. Autocar spotted a concept for the upcoming compact ID2 All from Volkswagen, and it was sporting a lot more physical buttons than before. According to the Volkswagen interior designer, the company is giving the people what they want as, quote, feedback from customers. This, especially in Europe, asking for more physical buttons. Back in June, Volkswagen CEO Thomas Schaefer previously told Autocar that customers were not loving the touchscreen heavy design, especially in the Golf MK8 and the ID3. But now, according to the report, the interior of the ID2 All features a row of backlit buttons for both climate and a rotary dial for the control screen. The ID2 All is expected to debut in Europe in 2025 and competing with a host of other small, cheap-ish EVs on the docket. In today's community comment found on YouTube, some of you took issue with Elon's statements and the subsequent fallout. I myself was not very familiar with the matter, and I had mischaracterized his words as being associated with the Israel-Palestine conflict, of which they were not. Nope, seems that this particular incident doesn't seem to be associated with a direct issue, but more of an escalation. Elon does this, they do that, he says this, and then that, and... I just try to stay out of the nonsense, and I even avoid reading news stories like this. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. In our information overload age, I feel like it's important to have a wholesome diet of information, occasionally speckled with some salacious stories, maybe even less than speckled. If you're a regular of Quick Charge, I already know that you agree with me to some point, but I do have some extended family that I'm going to be seeing very soon for the holidays. I love them, but I'm also bracing for impact in a way. Some of them are news junkies, and I'm hoping that things stay cordial. I generally don't mind discussing actual geopolitics, but the gossip, the name-calling, the sweeping statements, they wind up leaving me disappointed rather quickly. But thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.